2017 Fender Baja Telecaster in Sonic Blue. Pretty cool color, gotta say. I don't think they make them in Sonic Blue anymore. Awesome. At the risk of stating the obvious, you want to have the guitar tuned up very first thing. And I make these videos for maybe somebody who has the same model of guitar, just wants to see how I set it up. Maybe someone who's beginning, uh, starting out setting up guitars. The first thing I always do is sight down the neck and just see what the relief looks like. I'm going to measure the relief now with a feeler gauge. So we put the capo at the first fret, fret on the 17th, I'm checking at the 8th fret. I start with 0 .010 because that's a good reference point just to start with. I like to have less relief than 010 and you're just slipping the feeler gauge in between the top of the fret and the string and seeing if the string moves at all and I can easily slip 010 uh, in at the 8th fret here. So we've got a good amount of relief, which means um, I'm going to turn the truss rod before doing anything else. Easy way to turn the truss rod on a guitar like this, at least for me, you can't adjust it up here at the nut. It's uh, hidden down here at the base of the neck. So I put a capo on the first fret, loosen the strings, about two or three turns at least. Flip the guitar over, put it flat on the bench with the capo hanging over the edge so that's not <clears throat> so it's not leaning on the capo. So the guitar is flat and just loosen the screws very carefully holding the neck and the body, flip it over and just gently work that neck out. Okay. There's our adjustment screw right there. I'm going to take my favorite screwdriver and we loosen about a half turn first. Lefty Lucy, go left a little bit, back to where you were. That just releases any tension on the neck so you don't hurt the neck when you do this. And I know this needs a fair amount uh, of relief taken out, so there's about a half turn and maybe almost another half turn. Yeah, and it's okay if it's a little hard to turn. You don't have to be worried about hurting the neck. A lot of people are afraid of turning truss rods. I'm here to tell you I was like that in the beginning and it's really hard to hurt a neck unless you are cranking, cranking on that truss rod. Really hard. I mean, you gotta be cranking and the truss rod's gotta be maxed out to the max. Then you can start worrying about hurting the neck. Okay, put that down there so it's it's all in the neck pocket. Retighten. Don't want to over tighten the screws holding the neck on. I've learned uh, to do it and just go by feel. Pretty much, you know, tighten and so you're not like straining. It's just nice and snug. And once you've got that neck back on there, tune back up and check relief again. That took quite a bit of that relief out of that neck. Okay, 007. That's not a bad place to be uh, on a lot of guitars, but the only way to figure out <laughs> if it's gonna play nicely with uh, the neck this flat is to set your string height about where you want it and then just see how it plays. Right now, because we have flattened out that neck, it's brought the string action down a little too low. We're about 040050. So this has compensated saddles, they're called, and little Allen screws. We're just going to raise up the action on this guy. Loosen the strings one or two turns because when we raise up the action, it'll make it easier. And I'll just sit here and do a, like a turn on each side of these. The saddles on this kind of telly, it's a vintage style, so you've got um, each one of the saddles 
uh, adjust two strings at a time. So I just sit here with the action gauge just because this is a faster way to do it. And watch as I turn. That's giving me a little resistance. So the G and the D string are still too tight. Okay, it's about 060. Okay, so we know we've got the neck flattened out. We've raised the action up to a good spot at 060. And now you just want to see how it's how the guitar is liking that. So play on the low frets. Listen for buzz or anything weird. Sounds real clean. And just work your way up the neck. Play in the middle. And then the high frets. Sound pretty good so far. Nothing's like buzzing or sounding choked. You want to make sure after you have messed with the action a little bit, you need to retune because that'll affect how the guitar plays and sounds. Everything's ringing real clear. Half of a setup is just after you make adjustments, playing and listening. Playing all over the neck. You can tell a lot when you're playing single strings and bending. So you want to listen for just a nice clear ringing tone. Just like the bend all over the neck. This guitar is sounding pretty good. Nice easy setup. Nice flat neck. One thing I wanted to mention was when I was setting the string height. Um, it's nice to have the saddles somewhat follow the radius of the neck so you kind of get this arc going going over like that and you can also check it I like to look at the strings like this and look that the strings are following an arc that's another way to just kind of see um, if you've got a little bit of radius in your string setup once I've got the um, amount of relief set and the action and it's playing good, sounding good. I just check every single fret on the guitar to make sure there's no buzzing or anything funny. And after this, just have to set intonation. If you do a lot of setups, I really <clears throat> recommend one of these little clip-on tuners, man. It just makes it so easy. Just reference your tuning at any point during the setup. Tune up open, play at the 12th. Perfect. Every now and then, it just happens right. B string. Every now and then you do a setup where it's just like it sets itself up almost. Okay, the D and the A, both sharp, E sharp. <clears throat> so, with this kind of a bridge, you've got three separate screws, and each time you adjust one, you're going to affect the length of two strings. It's kind of a balancing act. You gotta hope that the G string uh, also keeps its intonation. Okay, D open, D at the 12th, it's still sharp. So we will tighten that screw again. Another turn, maybe? There it is. Now you just gotta hope the G is still in place at the 12th. And it is. There's the A at the 12th. We've moved on to this screw now because this screw affects the E and the A strings, right? So we need to tighten a little more. It's still a little sharp at the 12th. And see, it's hard to turn it right now. So loosen the E and the A. Give it a little turn. Very close, almost. Let's see where the E is. Okay, those are still sharp. So now I have backed that last saddle way the heck up. I can show it on here. That one there. And we had just enough room to back it up. 
and get that E and A perfectly intonated. But I also play um, triads up and down the neck that I'm used to hearing. So just starting with the D shape down here, playing a D triad here, another one here. And those all sound good. And the same thing with A and E. This is just what I've trained my ear to hear. But I come up with your own things that go up and down the neck. You play them a hundred times and you start to hear differences if one string is a little off intonation wise. So it's just ear training. If you're going to do a ton of setups, you get to know some some test licks or something that um, you can reference every time you do intonation. And this setup's just about done, but of course you want to plug it in at the end and just make sure it's sounding okay plugged in. Check your jack, check the pots, make sure there's no scratchiness. If there is, spray them out with contact cleaner. Listen for buzz in the amp. This, this one's buzzing, but if I move, I can hear the buzz changing when the guitar moves in relation to the amp. So I know it's just the 60 cycle hum in the room. It's not a problem with buzz in the guitar. I thought this was worth noting. There was a little bit of crackle in the volume knob. So these Bajas have an S1 switch. And where is it? There it is. You can see it's not your normal pot. It's got a button on top of the knob. Um, so you take it off like a normal knob. It's just got a standard screw on the side. But it's got, you know, you keep that thing together there and then you can get a little contact cleaner in right here, I believe. Just a little spray that feels real nice and smooth now. So that's kind of a, something that's particular to a Baja with this S1 switch.